Now you pray for us. Let me just do a brief review of where we were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Father, I do lift up this time to you, and I, I bless it, Father. That's something that is uh, dear to me, and I know is dear to you. Um, Lord, not just in that uh, myself and Emmanuel can spend it together in fruitful discussion, Lord, but because it is a, a subject matter that is prized by your own heart, that being the building of a culture, the real establishment and practice of a way of life. So Father, I, I do pray, Lord, that whatever you have to open up for us this morning, um, Lord, that uh, on my part I would be all the more attentive and focused to, to glean from what is shared and what is taught. Lord, I, I really desire that such times would or seed into uh, my heart something that does not lie dormant, but takes root and even emerges from, uh, if I might put it this way, Lord, the, the soil of my heart and would grow into something uh, fruitful and Lord, something that would even yield fruit through practice. Lord, I, you know that your your wisdom and Lord, what is in your heart, Lord, the, the passion for the building of a way of life is is also a a passion in my heart. Lord, is is something that I would want to see brought about in my own life and the lives of those around me and Lord even let it be the foundation of everything I do Lord that which informs everything I do mm. Lord I do indeed see it as uh, your greatest calling upon my life mm. and this way I, I don't take it lightly Father mm. and so in this light may I never take such a time as this for mm. granted but uh, cherish it whenever it is uh, made possible or whenever I have such an opportunity, mm. especially with uh, this brother, Lord, mm. who you have endowed with a, uh, Lord, a, a unique approach, but an inspired and enlightened approach to uh, this, this same zeal of yours uh, to see this brought about in a people and in a willing people mm. a people that wanted established in their own myths and their own lives mm. would be blessed in jesus name mm. Yeah. Mm. hallelujah let me just have a little bit of pre preview of uh some thoughts concerning chinese culture um Noah basically I'm gonna use you as um a, a, a opportunity for myself to re to learn and review some Chinese culture stuff. Okay, so I'm not necessarily uh, to teach you from my own stock, but it's also try to recover something I don't know. Uh I, I learned before only uh, in without God, basically that time, you know, so, um, and uh, and uh, then review with you from a new perspective, that is, you know, worship God, serve God, build God's culture. So in that light, I'm not uh, necessarily a, a, a teacher per se. I do want to use the material to introduce certain spiritual discussions on the Chinese culture stuff. However, I can't, <laughs> I can't afford to say. I'm a, we're knowledgeable enough, am I? You know, so uh, now I think I'm very steep in Chinese history, Chinese tradition, certain things, but not in the media greedy. Does it make sense to you? You know, so it's very, very refreshing and very <laughs> amazing to me to, to visit those teachers myself. It makes mm -hmm. sense to you? Those are, those obviously things always uh, encouraging and meaningful to 
to revisit, you know, because the topic matter. Is that making sense to you? So, yeah. But I don't think that will be a long term uh, our efforts in my life, in a sense, I can just use my time with you uh, to to go through that season or phase, okay? So, yeah, so I project it will be, you know, within the next couple of years, maybe, you know, so hopefully mm -hmm. do another year or two, you know, so, yeah, uh, if you need, we can continue to discuss things, but um, I don't want to you know, unless you have a super interest, you know, so, <laughs> or broader interest or detail interest, uh, which I do along the line, but I, it will be personal efforts, not shared with others. Is that making sense to you? You know, so, with you, however, those things will be shared with others. I try to do uh, with that purpose is compare uh, Western culture with Chinese culture or try to eventually compare Chinese culture uh, from a cultural building point of view, uh, to exhort and verify God's teaching in the Bible. Am I concerned in building these people up? So, um, the reason also, because of such discussions, I think others may follow or show interest, help them yet out the default they grew up with. That's Western, Grecian, Tradition. Is that making sense to you? Which mm -hmm. thought situation. Yep. I think that's how you, at least, am I? To see mm -hmm. there are other culture formations, there are other ways of thinking, there are other <laughs> ideals of life. Making sense to you? Other models of life. Now, that's not to highlight mm -hmm. Chinese culture, only saying Western culture has not been seriously examined as uh, the standing West and the prosperity. West for over a thousand years in the past with America come mm -hmm. for uh, three hundred years. I mean, getting prosperity only uh, one and a half century in a sense. But the proposition always is uh, they got it basically. We can see it in us. So, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the however, the crisis is a sense of a almost like a sense of a. Um, um, just the, the conflict, the the idea right now in the pinnacle. Am I to have built culture from this pinnacle? But the 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 the, the weakness, if you will, the the wrong headedness, wrong de uh, design, you know, and so you know, envisioning basically what the people or culture are supposed to be. Uh, become a, a such a such a struggle for Western, right? This is a loss of confidence. I mean, insist on it, but not necessarily for, uh, just try to preserve rather than confidently said, we are, we are the ultimate. Is that making sense to you? You know, so, yeah. So, um, I think that's indicating of the, uh, of repercussion. You know, eventually, more and more people will lose their confidence uh, uh, in in the West, you know. It's somebody like you, you want a candy, once you eat the candy, you don't really uh, getting feel, fulfilled with your hunger. I mean, isn't you? You know, so I think the prosperity mm. and many ideals begin gain presidency and uh, dominance even. Uh, begin to de wrong again itself. Have you heard the word called the thesis antithesis? You know, so antithesis. So man tried to say, or oh, Hegel started somewhere called the antithesis, thesis, and synthesis. Sorry, another yeah. dialectic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a dominant Western culture after that. You know, so uh, yeah. think conflict will lead to unity or further evolution of something. Combined with Darwin evolutionism, I don't want to do a, 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 a social study with you here. Just telling you, mm -hmm. those ideas begin to run its full course. Am I proved to be very damaging, and very, very problematic, especially when you're talking about cultural building, making sense to you to become a unified people. You know, learn to 
respect, love, and honor other. Um, you know, to highlight conflict and think of conflict, division, and the competitiveness is a source for strength. It's a strange, strange. <laughs> Only the devil thinks that. They making sense to you, you know. So yeah. So, okay. And uh, uh, anyway, so I'm saying that, of, however, dominant Western thoughts, you know, so the good, the bad, the ugly, even. You know, Marxism based on that, uh, Freemason based yeah. on that, the revolutionists, the Enlightenment based on that, you know, the, some major things, even the two party system or political uh, construct in Western cultures. Is that making sense to you? Always about the conflict, you know, so competing each other. Mm. Those are fundamentally, I believe, the wrong construct to begin with. But we're stuck with it, uh, you know, obviously the thing cannot get out and, and being lured into this loop for conflict, you know, so marred because we always think at the wing of our party. Unity is, is, a, is, a, is a basically a, a word for compromise, make it sense to you, you know, make do, you know, so it's not really mm -hmm. unity by heart, by vision. Is that make sense to you? You know, so right. those are things obviously um it's in my assessment is a terribly one vision what it means to be a unified people to begin with. Is that make sense to you? You know, so eventually okay. will discredit anybody to have a central consensus at the influence, be a eldership or leadership for the people. Is that making sense to you? It's impossible. So, so that is a damaging, especially for it's designed to damage generational blessing, unified, uh, like a heritage patch on one generation or another. Am I? So every day highlight freedom. You know, therefore, father cannot tell a whole song to think in that sense. Make it sense to you? You know, so those are were disabling. For school as well, you know, everybody can get the idea into the school if they, they allowed a infiltrate, a influence, indoctrinate their mind. Is that making sense to you? You know, parents or why the leadership, why the elders in, in society, community, don't really have a say over those things, the oversight of the thing. If you oversight it, again, it's a competition, a debate again. Making sense to you? You know, so rather than a character, and, um, you know, this moral authority, in a sense, you know, so all mm -hmm. the character authority, in a sense, you know, so all those things are demeaning and debasing human potentials, especially in terms we as agencies for God, through God, for change, for betterment, making sense to you, you know, so, yeah. So that being said, so how to yak that out? Said so that maybe is a wrong design, wrong way to go about things, to even think about things. That is a doom, 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 D O M E, man made, am I? Self subscribed, you know? So, um, so I think by visiting culture like a Chinese culture, biblical culture, I think they have a lot of compatibility there. We can at least start to think, oh, you know, your actuality, history standing, history stands, uh, that there is a way to do society, do human relationships, you know, do government, you know, do education stuff, then do culture, <laughs> eventually. So that's basically a preview on that. Uh, the intention of the why I wanted to go through Chinese culture with you, you know, so uh, this, that's one thing. The second thing is that this, when I continue to meditate on these things, is this a season for me, really a valid season? Uh, it has been along the trying search and quest because I know when I touch those topics, shallow mind or unprepared mind will I think I'm trying to 
to teach the Chinese stuff because I'm a Chinese, what kind of thing is it my point? You know, I'd mislead others because I try to show myself smart or something, like knowledgeable thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, fortunately, God had used others to, to, uh, to, to, to basically mitigate that. Um, but I don't know many people even care, you know, that's fine. But it's important for me, you care, <laughs> you know, is that making sense to you? You know, so in that light, I do want to tell you that Nicole recently had a waiting for me as opposed to this morning. Um, um, and uh, there, uh, one is the vision self, the other is um, uh, some com comment I had with her last night. It's a little bit lengthy talking. If you, if you, I think you, you can fast forward to the last part when we talk about the vision, okay? Understanding the vision. So, uh, in the vision, there is a part of it I think it's very meaningful for you to continue to clarify why we do what we do in terms of visiting Chinese culture. Okay? So, yeah. Just give me one second. Okay. I'm going to. Affirm a schedule as well, a little bit. I have to change schedule. Sure. Yeah. Good. Hmm. Okay. So, to review, last time, what we did is that we entered at the tail of our discussion last time, we entered into the first part, the third session, the first chapter. This is a book, a few chapters. Let me just read a little bit with you. Um, the first chapter, this one, I mentioned first chapter, is basically the way to nurture your virtue. In the first chapter, first session is why we should attain onto God's new virtue. Second, how to get it. And the third part was, is the vision and the fashion, or actually the character, of a dreams, dreams is a righteous man or a virtuous man in a sense, a wise man we call it. I in the future I'll call the righteous man, okay? So righteous obviously required wisdom, you know, and uh, character. Make sense to you? you know, so um so in in many ways the Chinese have word called it Kong's the dreams kind that are Confucius idea a viewpoint about such a righteous man. Now we, the first part on this session is the responsibility of righteous man. Then we, last time we visited the beginning part of this is, uh, um, hold on, let me change the schedule according to, okay, I don't want, I don't want to, also, my, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I need, I need something. Okay, so sorry. Okay, yeah. Sorry about that. The first part we're talking about, um, basically start with the idea of what it means to be a righteous man to begin with, and uh, so the author begin talking about the uh, the responsibility of righteous man. But there's an idea of um, a sheng ren, sheng means a perfect man, if we are on a holy man. And uh, you recognize through our former mentioning that uh, such a man <laughs> is rarely um, to be able to attain onto Confucius self, don't think himself to being one. <coughs> Later, <day. coughs> he's a follower for sure, or his disciple, <coughs> thinking he is one. But more like, uh, you know, you and Heng Zhang personality worship there, but th that's another story. But Confucius were humble and were realistic, said, No, I'm not such a man. Uh, that's an interesting concept, you know, so because we recognize the Bible tells us we need to be a holy man, you know, <laughs> a man of God in a sense, on the Son of God. So there is a, a different orientation. Later on, will become a major topic about what it means to uh, attain unto personal perfection. You know, in, in, in all. Um, uh, anyway, later on, Mofushi said this, this is a Shengren, this holy man, is the uttermost 
of the morals or virtues of human beings. The other also said, is another statement saying, a holy man, uh, this a virtuous, uh, perfect man, is the teacher, okay, of uh, hundreds of generations, you know, basically looking forward to, to be one influence culture rather than merely, you know, like a shining star flash over <laughs> one generation, two generations that disappeared. So and that turned out to be true, you know, like um, Confucius, Monfucius later on become the major um, teachers of moral and cultural values in China and uh, even beyond. You know, so talking about the <laughs> Hegel, others, you know, those German philosophers actually study Chinese philosophy. But, you know, so anyway, let move on. So how to be, uh, what it means to be a real Junzi, that is a righteous man? If you don't mind, I'm going to use a Junzi sometime, okay? Not translated. So, so there's a discussion about Wen he Zhi. Last time I'm talking about Wen means the appearance. On the decoration of something, you know, so zhi means the nature or something, something. So when zhi, obviously, when applied to a human, a person, in a sense, then there's a big question. Are you born with a good nature or born of a bad nature? What's the effect at the role, in a sense, Hodo says, okay, of later on the polishment or education? You know, so what really decided in the, in terms in overall assessment, a perfect man, you know, from an imperfection to perfection, which which part played the major role? Who is decider in that? There's some kind of a philosophical speculation of human nature, and thereby the effect of uh, human or education or others, uh, you know discipline or as the influence over the the heart and the character of a person. Now in the Bible obviously we use a different word to describe this. We talk about the human nature, we talk about the sinful nature, you know. Man is a boring sin, David says. So we had the word clear understanding in it. Confucius never defined a man who is a born. Confucius school thoughts I think he especially himself uh, this is beyond the test we are reading here. Is more thinking the education the ones he had were able to most likely to bring alignment eventually the kind of profession or improvement needed for the human character. Um, but also sometimes there are comments, a scandal in his uh, statements that he, he saw certain students, you know, impossible because their heart is not in it. So later on, this will become a big thing as also Confucius associated is, um, as the Bible talking about it, it's basically, do you have a heart for excellency or not? You know, so how God, in our where do we have a heart for godliness or not? Paul talked about godliness in his context, godliness is a great gain. Do you want to have that gain or not? Translate Jesus' statement would be, you know, a soul can gain the whole world, but if it lost it itself, then it lost everything, in a sense. So the idea of what you are the gain by following God, well, all enjoy life. So back to this comparison of nature and education or polishment, whatever the word call it, in the Bible, again, sinful nature, that's defined or clarified. But also, the Bible never lessen the importance of discipline or work of sanctification. You know, that's why discipleship is such a major, major established in conscious thoughts as well in Jesus set up and in the Bible to proceed this system in a sense uh, to be built in to society as a backbone and the central um, I mean you know, like a bloodline right so for uh, and a nervous system 
towards the society, especially in terms inform a unified of culture, agreement culture. You know that is a in the statement implied when God through the prophet said, without wisdom, restraint, education, discipline, a we that you must comply to, or a kind of culture you must conform to, without this wisdom, God's people will perish, means they were lost in our believing. You know, think about it, you lost your way, you know, so you don't get anywhere you lost, you see. So uh, people lost their way, you know, that's why the word called waywardness. So the uh, means your parables or life examples applied by Jesus, by the Old Testament, uh, God through his uh, prophets or teachers, and also Confucius. Confucius also called this certain kind of life, it's a way, it's a way, you know, so is that making sense to you? So, mm -hmm. With that, do you have some comments before I move on to without today's test? Mm -hmm. um, some of the concepts that you just introduced a moment ago, mm. um, obviously in my mind, I, I try to match them with some things that I've I've come across myself in some of my own studies, not necessarily to... Great. Mm -hmm. uh, more more for the intent of, you know, trying to have everything connect in my mind. So mm. when you speak of the difference between, I guess, an inherent nature mm. and one that is uh, disciplined into a life, so these, these two different ways that an, an identity mm. is formed or that a culture is formed in an individual, the the terms that I've, I've come across mm. recently, the way that they've been translated is, uh, on one hand, or uh, on the on the first hand, you have, I think, what is called uh, by one translation I saw intrinsic, like an intrinsic virtuosity, is what they call it. I had no idea. Which has more to do with. Yeah, I don't know if it's helpful at all, but it's yeah. it's they've been very interesting. That's uh, good. That's good delineation. Don't let me discourage you from discussion. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Of course. I just never read um, it, so that's why I'm saying I have no idea. Sure. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think we may actually come across the uh, the other term, which has to do with what is disciplined into a life mm. rather than born into or born into the life mm -hmm. or inherent in a life. Mm -hmm. We're going to come across the term in the uh, translation of the analects we're going through in class together, and they call this one... Uh, Cultural refinement is what it's called. I oh, think. refinement. That's a good word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, I like those words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What What will be important for us to mm -hmm. to uh, delineate as well is the difference between the way that culture is understood in the Western sense of being educated into a cultured person, mm. as opposed to culture in the sense of it, it actually being more of a, a way of life than mm -hmm. a, uh, you know, mm. a sophisticated person. That's what culture would usually imply yeah. we, in the Western sense. Yeah. Think about today's American is everybody said, model citizen, am I? In a sense. Yeah. But yeah, that, I, don't, I don't know if you've heard the term uh -huh. uh, cosmopolitan. So like a, a cultured person is like a, is like a cosmopolitan person. So they, they have like experience with, with mm. uh, you know the more refined things of their That's own true. culture or even of other cultures. They're world, they're world traveled. You might say, yeah, <laughs> it's that kind of idea that yeah. people usually uh, yeah. Stick to those word culture those we're speaking about what ideal person the society expect us to be. Am I? The other one, mm. as the Bible and Chinese, it always the song of your forefathers. Your forefather is not um, a black concept in those generations. It's basically the culture you inherited. You know, so this is this is modern society, the culture you inherited. You know, so is that making sense to you? Out of the lay foundation, yes. lay the uh, sweat and blood, and uh, you know, so you know to respect honor that and become honorable um 
member of uh, a culture, a society, you know. So therefore, it has to do with family traditions. No, not merely family. I'm talking about generation to generation, you know, pass on in a sense, a father to sons, you know. Um, again, a teacher of many generations, a father to the posterity. You know, you do things, think about what the long term will impact your own people, your sons and daughters of after you, of many generations. You know, so you don't treat this um a cog in the machine, you know, a someone with this labor force for productivity. So in a sense, Western culture in in many ways typically promote that. The respect for personal right, personal freedom, personal happiness, but、uh, in the very beginning, the heart of heart is alienated the anyone's base value. You know, so they don't believe you belong to the culture. They don't believe you can be a, a member of family, and, and you know, and the 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 generation standing. Have an obligation to treat you right as your own sons, you know. So those are fundamental misconstructions which I handle it really. I don't want to be so sharp, but <laughs> you bring it out, you know. So am I making sense here? You know. So、yeah. what education do they do in the, in the academic, academic or whatever? You know, somehow you are thinking in a machine society on a system, whatever they made up. Whatever law or contract is made up, you are fit in and be efficient with it. So called, so it's a productive usage, utilitarian. What you have used for me, that me is very shifting and never defined, or what you use for society in a sense, can be cheaply and,、uh, you know, unhandily replaced. You know, I I don't want to talk about the grossly thing. This really shocked me. I mean, this is terrible. I don't want to mention it. Maybe it's bad for the young person. So, but <laughs> certain people just they will disrespect, even do harm to their parents in the name of loving the nation, love the party, love love whatever. You know, what like a society that. In the end of the day, and they think it's doing devoted or doing a noble thing, you know. So, but if that is promoted as something good in general, for whatever reason, you know, to treat parents, respect parents as if they are evil, oppressive, a、uh, some character in your way, you can dispense them with your preference, your liking, or not. Are fundamentally wrong, you know. So fundamentally wrong. You're going to be a father. You're going to be a mother. Your children are going to treat you like that. Is that you're going to be good? Self-defeating. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's terribly short-sighted and, and misleading. But it continues to be promoted. You know that is something communists do, Nazism do. You know. So I don't know. So you know, and、uh, so. Doesn't matter that replace the communist or Nazism with democracy or American, you know, American American nationalism, whatever, whatever it is, is inhuman to think about it. You know, so in the name actually preserve, you know, prosperity nation, good for the gen general public, you know,、uh, fulfill the idea of constitution. But what are those things actually for to begin with? If we lost respect and、uh, cherishing individual value, intrinsic value of individuals in society, by positioning the positivism as a family, not a a a political system, you know, not an ideological machine. So those are hugely problematic. That's why the Bible and Confucius school thoughts are so distinct, different. Than other teachings, because they always oriented intrinsic value in individuals, and respectfully, 
to suggest and and uh, educate you. I like the word culture one, refinement or something in you know, the educate enlighten you to say that we all one family. You know, so is that making sense to you? We all belong to one another. Is that making sense to you? That's basically this idea for love your neighbors and on yourself. What it implies, like basically, we are all one family. That's true. God created man to be so. You know, to be a people and love one another, being one family under His fatherhood. Is that making sense to you? That's why Paul is a word called the derive our name from the Father. You know, in the name is that means fatherhood is from which we derive our name. Means which lineage, which forefathers you have. You have God as your father. You have your name. He give your name, am I? He said, "You're my family. You're my sons. Uh, if you need daughters, <laughs> you know, so, you know, so you're important to me. You belong to me. You're born to me. You matter to me." I don't think any more liberty, more democracy, more fulfilling, more idealistic than those kind of ideas. But for sure, religion is distorted, debased, it, and changed it into I don't know, you know, again, those those degradation, individualization, alienated from God's heart and vision for His people. Again, the vision, the vision. So. Um, uh, continue. Do you have further input? It's almost uh, only had ten minutes left. I don't think we need a further long. We'll just do a recap here. So oh, please yeah. go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I think we next time we're gonna continue. Okay, but uh, I want to have this oh, okay. topic. Yeah. So what are you thinking further along um, this line? I actually, mm -hmm. yeah, during your discussion, I, I, uh. Wanted to bring some resolve to what mm. I was originally, yeah, thinking in terms of the terminology. Okay, and I pulled up the uh, the book that we're going through, and they have a a glossary of terms. Mm. And so, cultural refinement. Uh, I wanted I wanted to figure out the the actual Chinese word for it, so that I guess your mind would uh, mm. understand uh, more to where these terms were coming from in mind. In my mind. Uh, mm. So for cultural refinement, the word is um, win. I don't mm. know how it's correctly pronounced. Win. Mm. Talking about? I'm sorry, can you do it again? Uh, in pinyin, it's spelled W E N. So when? Win. Uh, win he zhi. Yes. Uh, win he zhi. Yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about Oops. here. So, yeah. Go ahead. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I when I said intrinsic virtuosity, I guess the 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 proper translation uh, of that is actually inborn nature is how they put it here in the yeah inborn nature. The that's a good way. Yeah, exactly. Basically, right. the nature yeah, you're born with. Really yeah, you're like like born that. with. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's original yeah, my, nature in a sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, my intent was, of course, not to get uh, stuck <laughs> stuck up oh, in the no. terms. So no, I, I just wanted to. To it's, clarify it's that, it's perfectly but, um, fine. Mm. What about the one? Yeah, to, uh, what about the one that is um, the first one we call the zhi, I mean, the nature thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the one? I noticed um, the grocery. What about the one? What you said? Yeah, I, I'll read uh, some of it here. Uh, what you're gonna notice is I think the author falls somewhat. Or the, the commentator falls somewhat short of the, the the broader meaning or understanding of that that word. But okay. uh, here, mm -hmm. let me let me read it. Mm -hmm. Literally referring to writing, when often serves in the analects as a general term pertaining to the sort of acculturation, training in ritual, the classics, music, etc., acquired by someone following the Confucian way. Mm -hmm. In this respect, it is often portrayed metaphorically as a kind of adornment or refinement of the native substance. Mm. An educated person brings to the process of acculturation. Mm. It is often emphasized that cultural refinement requires a suitable substrate of native substance, where when is compared to cosmetics, 
applied to a beautiful face, but ultimately a proper balance between the two must be struck. Yeah. Sometimes win is also used in the more narrow sense of a set of specific practices like those later formalized as the so-called six arts of ritual, music, archery, charioteering, calligraphy, mm. and mathematics, sure. in which any gentleman was trained. Yeah. That's a still outsider point of view, you know, so looking at his right. properly. That's kind of how I'm seeing yeah. it too. <laughs> like insider's understanding, so, no, yeah. Of course, basically, we're talking about what kind of education you can offer to young people or to those disciples that will make them a righteous man. So, is that making right. sense? Rather than polished the real man. Problem yeah. I, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. It's like in the word, if you, you, there's a good article actually written, I like it, you try to recital it, called What It Means to Be a Gentleman. You know, gentleman likeness we often say, you know, British concept, basically, a cultivated man. Mm -hmm. But gentleman likeness can be a evil man. You know, mm -hmm. Hitler's a word gentleman, like, in many ways. Mm -hmm. You know, that's gentleman. I, mean, I think the big leaders, they have to be a gentleman in some way. Nobody can be a full man, uncultivated one. Nobody can put out with it in a sense. So you have to somehow intrigue, polish way, and some kind of honor and credibility to their character, to the ways, to garner support and appeal. Make sense to you? You know, so. Or else, the, how, how they can be a leader? How people want to follow them, respect them? <laughs> I mean, leaders is one person, you know? There's another mighty giant that's going to everybody don't agree with me, you know. That's a foolish thinking. So they have some idea, and they were disciplined normally. Mosey, Dong, Stalin, Hitler, Napoleon, give you a slew of things. People are very polished. That's why people commit to them, you know. So they treat their own people were most likely very nice, or a certain principle at least. And people said, that's good, that's right, you know, so I, I yield that leadership. So I, I forgot where, why we came this, to this topic. Oh, gentleman likeness. Now, gentleman likeness does mean godliness, godliness. It's far from it. The British people, Christians most likely, did the most evil thing in human history. You know, so is that making sense to you? You know, so to today, mm. we still, the political system, certain influences still run the show. I mean, why they have an idea called a monarchy going? I'm not trying to say the bad people are good people. The monarchy is a, today's monarchy, especially in British, is a perfect example of a hypocrisy. Is that making sense to you? It's basically like a show business. Mm. You know, so I'm not, I'm just saying it sounds ugly or too sharp, maybe, to those people who enjoy the sentiment. Really? You know, so the monarchy is eventually, for sure, depends on the personality. Um, you know, can you imagine, you know, so, so history only have one good monarchy that's uh, the lady Elizabeth, am I, the third or something, the second, I'm not sure, the one that's passed away. For 60 years or so, um, you know, she is a mainstay, a learn respect through her virtue and devotion and good nature. But the English monarchy is laden with a bloodshed, palace intrigues, huge, huge destructing effect. I mean, read Henry VIII a little bit. <laughs> you know, so that's where it started. I mean, the you know, so he, he had, this taught you, eight wives, he killed seven of them, I think. <laughs> so he's just not divorcing them, he killed them. What a evil man can be that? You know, so, I mean, you share a bed together, you have a child together, you are. You know, kill, <laughs> somewhere you have affection, where it's like that, he's no human being, like a, like a, like like a dog, you know, try to bite the people. Got got a man, 
you know, those are like, like, what kind of mind that? But this is the one starting the British monarchy. And the, then self assigned to be the head of the Anglican Church system, which is a separate from Catholic tradition. So we're talking about some serious misnomer, what it means to be a gentleman, to be a religious head even, or nation head. But I don't think British, uh, even with whatever we do it, you know, they have really fundamentally in the heart of heart reconciled. That's a bad evil. You know, because somehow they turn to be powerful, a great empire, you know, some never said so called. They, they somehow never really fundamentally said, maybe our culture from the very beginning is very problematic. You know, this, you know, the, 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 the lead on the rebel against monarchy give us parliamentary, parliamentary po politics, making city parliamentary government, sorry, you know, so give us what are called uh, the restraining uh, dictatorship or monarchy's power that are called the Manikata in you know, a tradition common law tradition they lay down, developed from there. And uh, then the, uh, England, uh, you know, the New England people, the, the, the 13 colonies, was upset mainly because, not taxes also, as you read, am I? So, you know, you read with me half in the book, <laughs> we didn't finish it. They were upset is because the British don't treat them as their own citizen try to treat them as a colony. In a sense, rob them their their basically don't apply common common law. That means the British only apply common law to their own citizens. Colony to treat them like slaves. Or something they can do whatever they want to do. Which they did. And caused many heartache and suffering to other people till today. You know Today I heard this today as evidence. This is a branch of topic I can talk a lot, but it, it's a history fact. So, you know, the pa Pakistan now, Pakistan next to India, you know, the two party leaders basically contending who win the election. All this is the downflow of the junk of a British rule, you know. Pakistan was absolutely separated by the British once they had a yield uh, to, to self-determination, you know. So only in one, you would think a long time ago, only in the 50s, uh, oh, I'm not sure, they hold on to South Africa until the 70s last century. Hong Kong then until the 90s last century. You know, those, uh, I mean, yeah, each one have the context, the, the use the media, politician, whatever propaganda to say somehow they localize the construct, conflict, whatever. The truth matter, the evil as a condition was start with the British. They're the source of the problem. And even they refuse the left. The left will not interest for people to fight each other. You know, design for people to have a fight. You know, incredible evil. You know, the British, uh, I don't know, the political power, the interest, it's a such a evil construct. And sometimes in the name of Christianity, by the way, in the name of moral values. So, but there are, you know, those are parliament. Parliament started by Christians in, in terms, you know. So it was a, it's a rebel of Christians, a Puritans rebel. Cromwell was a Puritan leadership. She was, he was a spiritual leader behind for that. So, I don't know a lot about the history, but I know enough to know that that's many things presented it distorted. I'm not hate British people. I think they've done a lot of good to the general progress of civilization uh, and improvement. You know, those nations in disarray and the advancement British and the rural British has introduced a lot of economic development on the same time and what cost was the world region of uh, society 
for what real reason they did those things. You know, mm -hmm. uh, look at the history of uh, <coughs> East Indian Company. You will find, you will be startled how evil that nation is. I mean, the British, that's why American break off from British rule. Is that making sense to you? You know, because of interests. They can't argue case. I remember if I remember right, Franklin, what is the guy, the founding father, one of the older founding fathers, Franklin, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Benjamin Franklin, that's it. Was um, in as a representation of the colony those days, you know, that called the Commonwealth those days. I'm not sure now. Uh, so he was sent to British, have a seat in the parliament. He was a thoroughly humiliated. <laughs> there was a young leader in the parliament, you know, I think his name is Pete or someone, I'm not sure now. So humiliated him so much that he took a vengeance with it in the 70s or some nature said i going to decide once he was thoroughly humiliated outed from the parliament he dedicated himself to to try to work on the separation of american colonies from the british war that's all started before that he was a pretty cheap welcomed you know, so especially in French was well welcomed, celebrated, but when the new government came in, I mean, it's just personal humiliation onto him, turning him to be. Before that, he was a compromiser. He was he was one representing American in British. He had a lot of friendship there, uh, but eventually, you know, he was the one arranged the writings of uh, Thomas Paine, you know, the one called the right of common sense. The whole thing was promoting or propaganda in well, the word, to stir up the public sentiment, especially against the British rule. Um, you know, um, Thomas Paine was, a, was an absolutely antichrist person. He hid Christ. He hid the Bible. He hid the Christian. And uh, those are from Freemasonry uh, associations. Uh, but, you know, Thomas Penn wrote all that. You would think he's an American person, a citizen. No, he don't even live in America. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> he was a, a hired writer, you know. And uh, because of Benjamin Franklin was one is a printer, you know, he started with the printing business. So he's, he's, he controlled the press, controlled the newspapers those days. So he's just good with uh, soliciting, have, have a school of people stir up their sediments. So start with the propaganda, if you will, you know, so those are things that are very intriguing, you know, that's the revolutionary do in those days, you know, British, uh, this one later on is a copy candidate in the most part about the French Revolution. That's Marxist, you know, Karl Marx did. <laughs> so, I'm sorry to see that, but uh, Karl Marx modeled after certain people that stir up revolution. Those are kind of sentiments against the existing government, basically, existing monarchy, whatever it is. My point that you might want to read the history. In a sense, zoom in some dark background to study some biography to see why they did what they did. It's not always a shining example, you know, for ideal thinking. Most likely, it's a personal interest and uh, and uh, you know, political interests. You know, so is that making sense to you? You know, so Thomas Jefferson, the same thing. You know, so. Among all the founding fathers, there's only one or two have outstanding character. Washington was one, John Adams was one. I'm, I'm not knowing too much enough, but I know that it, there's a heart behind what they did. You know, so certain people, you know, you would think they have a heart for American colonies. That's not true. They are hard for some ideals they want to use American colonies as a vehicle to accomplish something. 
that's a Freemasonry formation was about to to upset British rule to have their own kind of garment, their own kind of way doing society. You see, I mean, all those things. I'm saying this to you. It's obviously compromised idealism, whatever going on. It is not a good start for culture building. It may be good for governmental orientation or this, you know, new society formation. They need those things, but those kind of thinkers or architect of a nation and a people, a new people in this case, it's not like Jesus, not like God through Moses in the Old Testament time, not like Confucius. They are not looking forward for the people to become a family, am I right? To become one people, they're looking forward to find the expression and embodiment of some kind of ideals or philosophical constructs or social concept, political agendas, in a sense, could you quote? And you know, so yeah, they have a lot of reason to see those things. But eventually, it's a legalistic and philosophical contract, being in essence. But it's not human kindness. Therefore, treat human nature often time as evil, rather than as good. The American society why they have separate powers because they believe this concept absolute power corrupts absolutely. Well, that's that's an interesting concept. Why? I mean, it's yeah. Every society has this bad stuff. Yes, that's true. Human nature is uncurbed, but that the outstanding existing only in Western culture, Western monarchy in Europe. So you know, kings or monarchies like Louis the Fourteenth, like this mentioned Henry the Eighth, scared people. <laughs> Napoleon himself. You know, give I mean, then others like Caesar. You know, being killed by his best friend, Brutus, I think the name. You know, the Anthony. After that, you know, so there are few virtue and long vision. The people don't have a heart. It's not father of culture, father of generations to start with. The political heroes. You know, so. Uh, that being said, the ten ten, I better wrap it up with you. No one,、um, I hope I don't、uh, dump on you some biased ideas, or rather, maybe some succinct observation. You know those kind of things before I became、um, uh, desperate in life. I study all that, and I told you, you know, for just when read all those things, seeing all those things, I said, oh my. History definitely is not as、um, people paint it. You know, look at zoom into the personal character, personal life. I found wow, we are led by people who really don't know who they are themselves. We are the mass is a, is a falling somewhere, and they have no idea who they truly are. You know, so. The leader don't care the people. The people don't know the leaders what it's about. So is that a sad story or not? <laughs> those who lead you don't care about you, and those you follow, you don't know what they up to. You don't even know or care they are the good people or not, even decent people or not. That's a, that's a sad story repeated in every society. You know, so I mentioned the character because you're familiar with. Well, listen, why don't we wrap it up? So yeah, I hope that don't discourage you. Okay, rather encourage you to say,、oh. we are rising up to become a new people. Hopefully, we'll lay foundation for the generation to come. Amen. I'm my prayer for you in the day, and my labor, if I can, loud. To lay a good foundation start for your spiritual and even general life speaking, is to try to make you a teacher, a father for many generations. Ah,、uh, because that two ideas that is huge. Well, 
you know, think about it. You can honor Washington as a father of a nation. I mean, certainly I would honor Abraham as a father of faith and my son, posterity. What about the Son of God? The Son of God cannot lower that standard. We must start with looking at Jesus, his heart, his intent, his vision. As a kind of ministry or disciple, she, he wanted us to be equipped into. And you don't tell me it's not looking for eternity as our future. Make it sense to you? You know, so, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, as people said, too grand, too good to be true. But read the gospel, please. And study why Jesus came to the world and died for humanity. Died for you and me. Go ahead and pray and wrap up here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Lord, in one sense, I look at my own life and, Lord, I am overwhelmed at the, the measure, the scale, the great extent of your calling, but in light of how uh, small and really unworthy that I am, but Lord, I know I'm also learning to see things from your perspective, Lord, mm -hmm. through your eyes. Mm -hmm. Lord, while your love is, I think, a thing impossible to grasp, uh, Lord, it is nonetheless a, a thing necessary and essential to practice and walk in. And Lord, this would only show us the, the nature of a, a spiritual life, a, a life of a son, mm. Lord, in which the ideas of our minds are not what bring us certainty mm. they're not even what uh, feed and nourish uh, the greater vision mm. Lord it is rather the, the light and the the truth and the wisdom of your spirit that inspires and informs our spirit man mm. that leads us onwards that gives us that uh, that confidence mm. uh, to rise up uh, wherever we are in this life mm. and Lord, whatever we have been born into, mm. whatever we have experienced, mm -hmm. uh, Lord, your, your hand is strong and able mm. to use everything to further your purpose in a life. So, Lord, even as those who are students of history and of the, uh, Lord, that, that complex story, which is the mind and the heart of man, uh, Lord, even, even in this, uh, we are we are not left confused or bewildered or overwhelmed mm. by what man would uh, presume to be an impossibility lord your your purpose to to, mm -hmm. to raise a people that will in your time mm. <clears throat> And your timing, Lord, change, change the world, change the heart of mankind completely. Um, mm. Mm. Lord, we, I think the beautiful thing is that we, we don't walk every moment with a, a, a grand and proud vision per se. Mm whatever present in our minds and always swelling in our hearts but but whether we we learn to walk and 
in in the the humble pattern of obedience mm. that your your own son mm. uh, embodied mm. in his time on this earth mm. but as one who who would even go on to say not mm. my will but yours mm. and Lord this <laughs> this is our this becomes truly our our mode of life where mm. where we don't even in, in walking in humility Lord is not a false humility Lord a humility that is uh self-directed or uh, Lord leads to uh, mm. Lord a, a lack of, of of energy Lord a, mm. a stagnancy Lord, <laughs> but is a humility that can mm. is is willing to be brought even to the highest place the most exalted place um, Lord that your truth and your light might be known that it might change the hearts of men mm. and it might be the hope for future generations. Mm. Lord, this is our hope. This is the the vision that uh, we pursue that drives us onwards. And mm. Lord, we, we bless you and praise you for all of it. <laughs> For what you have shown and what mm. you will reveal to us mm. and what you will enable in us mm. to see it brought about. Thank you, Jesus. I pray this in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Love you, Noah. I deeply appreciate you. Amen. Hallelujah. Love you too. God is good. Huh? <laughs> Amen. How beautiful to embrace this vision and this way for us. Mm. Behind is the loving ask, Father. Yeah, go ahead. Amen. Mm. The vision that you uh, mentioned oh. earlier that Nicole had is, is that. Um, it's on YouTube already. Is it so, in, yeah, this morning actually. Is it the one that's mm -hmm. 13 minutes journey unto Sinai and Zion? Is that what it is? Is it that one? Yeah, that's the original vision thing I discussed mm -hmm. last night with him. There is a vision for the manual, the next one. But I can send to you if you want to. Yeah, so yeah. that one maybe. Oh, I just see the longer one. Yeah. Yeah, the longer one.